is recognized that there was a gap in high quality religious education. And that is one of the root causes of the issues we face in Kaduna State and in our country. I would encourage you, Your Excellency, wholeheartedly to see how increasing government investment in religious education can be one pillar of our response to violence and to conflict. The key, the key purpose of education is to open our minds to new thinking, to understanding the views of others. It is not simply to affirm what we already believe in and think we know. This can be especially damaging when it comes to religious education or a lack of religious education. When we think we know all we need to know about the religion of the other. Whether you are a Christian or a Muslim and are unwilling to expand your knowledge, there is a very real risk that you are yourself part of the problem rather than being part of the solution. How can we ensure that our youth are continuously learning about the beliefs of those who are different from them through good religious education. This is something that can be championed by government and supported by religious leaders and through institutions like Kaduna Center for the Study of Christian-Muslim Relations. As I speak of religious leaders and speak as a religious leader, I also acknowledge that we have a significant and weighty responsibility to practice what we preach when it comes to our understanding of our own religion and a good working knowledge of the other religion. In my travels around the Anglican world, and I cover 170 countries of the world, I am sometimes concerned to discover that religious leaders do not have an in-depth knowledge of what it means to even be an Anglican. We are getting our own house in order through supporting our bishops in accompanying them in their role and through more emphasis in theological education, which is something that we have invested in at our offices in London and in our colleges, seminaries, and other institutions around the world. We must take a similar approach here in Kaduna State in particular and the other northern states in general. Religious leaders need to be accountable to one another. We must be willing to challenge one another when we hear things that are false. We are not doing that now. This is particularly important when we speak about the other. Our congregations and our followers, they trust us as religious leaders. We have an obligation to them to speak the truth and to actively ensure that we are speaking the truth by educating ourselves to a high enough standard. To be educated in this way does not mean that we must agree with everything that we learn. Not at all. I always crack this joke and of course shake 
Abu Bakr knows that very well. When, like this morning, when he prayed, after Surah Al Fatiha, he recited Surah Al um, Ikhlas. And I followed him until we got to verse 3, and I kept quiet. <laughs> you know, that's what it should be. I am not ignorant. He knows I'm not ignorant. <laughs> but we do all things together. We can uh, disagree in the way we understand this concept of Allah. But Allah is the creator of everybody. But for Allah, we won't be here. Without apologies to those who are even offended by my saying Allah. <laughs> if you don't believe in it, go to the Arab world. You have to explain to the Arab Christians what name to call Allah. I didn't say God. <laughs> There are many differences, brothers and sisters, within and between religions that express a diversity of beliefs. But we must be willing to hear what others believe. Nigerians, Northerners, we must be willing to hear what the Muslim believes, what the Christian believes. We must be willing to hear and to be able to grapple with these issues in peaceful manner. Come and say, anger. There is too much hatred in Kaduna State. And I say this as an indigenous of this state. Too much hatred. And that is why we are not making enough progress. But there is progress. Just listen to me. And we must proactively find the opportunities to grapple and discuss. Ignorance and all that comes with it, fear, hatred, and conflict, happens because we separate ourselves from those that we disagree with and from the other. We might do this out of concern for ourselves, that if we are seen to be speaking with someone who is the other, that it will damage our reputation with our own communities. And I've gone through that. I remember as bishop here in Kaduna, I was on my way to Sokoto, as I always do during Ramadan. As the last day of Ramadan, I'll be in Sokoto and I will fast. We'll break fast together. And I stopped over in Zaria with one of my members. She's late now, so I can say this. She said, in Azaka, that is a photo. Ah, we shall Kahanka Liba. Go Sultan Zaka. Kahanka did the Mutari number. Mutari number. Umbahinka. Mutari number. So, Illa, the Sultan, HRH, one is on my right, one is on my left. We are still together. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> but this may not be the only one. This also happens because of fear and sometimes hatred. We so hate each other in Kaduna State. And I'm speaking from experience. Too much hatred. Some, when they hear the name Mark, Kamar Kashine, a human being but created in the image of God. There is too much hatred. These are things that we must also work against in Kaduna State. And we must resist the temptation to separate ourselves from those who are different and with whom we disagree. Therefore, we must engage in activities together. It is not enough to simply have knowledge and understanding in your head. You must also practice what you learn, my brothers and sisters. Religious leaders can set a good example in engaging in activities with leaders from the other religion. Perhaps sharing a platform on issues of mutual concern or taking part in activities that build trust 
and relationships. Two weeks ago, I was invited to the nation of Barbados. I was in Kingston. A bridge town, Barbados. Christians, Muslims, and Jews. Come and share Kaduna experience. I felt on top of the world. Kaduna in this small nation. 250,000. That is the whole nation. So I said, look, Nigeria can give birth to you a million times. <laughs> but they were so interested in learning about how we are trying everything possible here to live together. And I felt, I felt blessed being invited. I, I, can't, I didn't ask how they got to know about me. And they said, come and share Kaduna State with us. This is what we're talking about. They have sensed drug addiction as their problem. So Christians, Muslims, Jews, including Rastafarians, because they're there. They didn't say they are a minority. No, they brought them in. That's what we are talking about here. At our center, you know, I, I thought the students were going to share their experiences. When we said presentation, you know, the ma, ma, uh, malaprop, malapropism. The Messiah's two presentation as giving gift. I wanted them to share what they have done at the center. Yes. <laughs> now, during the last Ramadan, the Muslim students on their own, and I want Christians to listen to this because I have heard some of our leaders, bishops, archbishops, say, look, you people, you are wasting your time. In Ramadan, why is it that the Christians are the ones that invite? They want to do this. No. At our center, the Muslim students, they cooked their food, invited their Christian brothers and sisters, they shared iftar together. That was what I wanted them to share. I'm asking you, we are doing things together. We have visited Kano Road Mosque, we visited the members of Wolf Road Mosque, so a way to Enya between us. That's what we're talking about. We need to do things together in Kaduna State. Ante Kaduna Center of Learning. Let us do it also as a center of religious tolerance. I come back to the quote that I began with from Nelson Mandela. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Let me, at this point, publicly even thank, even though some of us didn't like it, thank our governor for taking education very seriously. It has to start from the primary level. When you have a teacher who hears presentation, and instead of making a presentation, he brings gifts. Something is wrong with the teaching. Is that correct? After anti presentation, I can come on a presence. It has to do with the teacher. I know Her Excellency, please take our appreciation to His Excellency. We want more radical moves within our schools so that in Dansukaji presentation, they know that it is not gifts. It is for you to come and share. Now, the quote I strongly agree with, but brothers and sisters, we also know that education is a lengthy and ongoing process. It does not happen overnight. It requires commitment, investment, sustainability, and cooperation. Another wise man said, he said this about education, and he begins his quotation by referring to the first person to say this, which is Francis Bacon in the year 1561. This African said, and I quote, knowledge is power. That was first said by Francis Bacon in 1561. So the African said, knowledge is power. Information is liberation. Education is the premise of progress in every society, in every family. Those are the words of Kofi Annan. I am struck 
by the emphasis, by the phrase, education is the premise of progress. This is what we need to focus on, progress in Kaduna State. There is much to do, and education alone cannot solve all our problems. But where we see progress, we find encouragement. We have seen progress here in this center. And I'm so delighted and grateful to God that uh, uh, His Excellency uh, Ahmed Makarfi is here because this center began during his time. I'm so grateful that we accepted to be here today. We have made much progress since the center was founded 15 years ago. Many people have left this place transformed, committed to making progress and to being peace builders. Una Salah for our communities. Let us hope and pray that in another 15 years, the work of places of education, like the Kaduna Center for the Study of Christian Muslim Relations, will not stop there. And people will not find it unusual that what is taught here is common in our schools, colleges, and universities, that we all know much more about the other, and that we engage together much more. This graduation, therefore, is a powerful image of progress, and one that we can all be inspired by. I congratulate our students and I thank you all for coming to grace this occasion. Shukra. Thank you very much.